thank you everybody very much for coming. Thank you very much for coming at this also at this very, very last minute organized event. I will start off with what the can you you can't hear me. Can you come a bit closer? Because this is on maximum. And actually, if you can all come, and what we'll do first is what the national organizers have asked us to do, what the international organizers have asked us to do. Because today is Joe Cox's birthday. And they are asking all people all over the world to take a pledge to love like Joe. Joe Cox believed in a love that is fierce brave and humble, a love that could cross any divide. Joe's legacy is a direct challenge to every one of us to step up, speak out and take action, to be a voice for the voiceless. Joe is no longer with us, but together we can take forward the causes she championed and show that love is stronger than hate. This is the challenge, to love like Joe loved. Not just to love a neighbour, but also to love a neighbour's neighbour. So what will it mean for you to love my friend? Please take a few minutes to talk to the person next to you. To say how you will commit to carrying Joe's legacy forward. We know that she wouldn't have wanted us to say the right things. She would have wanted us to take action. And now is our turn to love like Joe. So please turn to the person next to you, preferably somebody that you don't know, and say how you will love like Joe. One thing we would like people to do is to share this message, uh, to share your pledge, and that we've taken this pledge. So they're actually asking us for a photo shoot to stand shoulder to shoulder Raise our arms and hold hands for a group photo. over now to Daniel's thank, thank you very much and good afternoon everyone and thank you for coming on what is a very very sad occasion but must be translated into something positive I was in the House of Commons on Monday afternoon and I've only been an MP for just over a year but it was an extraordinary moment my, my friend Richard was there too and to see so many people differing political persuasions standing together was a very, very moving moment. And the reason it happened was because Joe was an extraordinary person, but also the values that she espoused, I think, have touched people in a way that people haven't seen for a long, long time. So it's allowed people to put aside some of their petty divisions and actually think more optimistically, hopefully, about the future. I think what perhaps was particularly touching was seeing Brendan and the children in the gallery, which many people found hard, but nothing can be as hard as it, as it is for them. And I think the whole country is united today in being with them and looking to the future. So thank you so much for coming today. Actually, the end of the, um, the session in the House of Commons, which some of you would have seen, in a totally spontaneous way, people applauded. And what they're applauding, I think, 
was Brendan for children and that hope for the future. And I'd quite like us to applaud now in a spirit of looking forward. Thank you very much. My name's Paul Milbank. I knew Joe. I worked with Joe in Oxfam about 15 years ago. Uh, when I first met Joe, she was in Brussels as the lobbyist for Oxfam. And I turned up, having been the foreign correspondent covering Europe, so I thought I could tell Joe a thing or two about how you manage the European politics. It took me about 30 seconds to realise that I didn't need to tell Joe how to manage European politics, and she was going to tell me exactly how it was done. I didn't just know Joe, I knew Brendan. I hired Brendan to Oxford. And I knew their houseboat, and I knew when they got married. And I have to say, when I heard I was abroad, but when I heard uh, that she'd been hurt first, and then she was dead, it was, a, it was a huge blow. And thinking of the children, because there's a personal story. 60 years ago, my father was shot dead by terrorists in Cyprus. And it made me think about those children growing up without Joe and how difficult that's going to be, and how difficult that's going to be for Brendan. But then seeing on Facebook today things like an individual in Aleppo, in the middle of a war zone, holding up a sign for Joe, I think that says everything that you need to know. Thank you. Um, I have to say that I heard about Joe from her friends. Um, who got in touch with me almost immediately, which was the most moving part of my experience. Because the networks that started when they were all undergraduates that have continued are part of the unity that you guys are talking about today. I have to admit that I was talked to by a couple of reporters, all of whom wanted me to say, I knew she was gonna be a star. What I knew is that whatever she did, she was committed to taking part in a society that she defined as global. You know? And if you even just take a look, she started as an anthropologist. She said she wanted to be a forensic archaeologist. By the end of the first year, she came to me and said, no, what I need to do is take courses that get me ready for the whole world, yeah? So in the last year, she took war, peace, and global security, she took revolution, she took Latin America. Her, her political education was on the street with her friends and with her studies. Her maiden speech, which I've only heard about, I certainly was not in Parliament at the time, didn't surprise me because that notion what unites us is way stronger than anything that divides us. What's clear to me for her from the beginning. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm currently the mayor of Cambridge. Usually it's left for the mayor to talk about bland things and not to be terribly controversial, but I'm going to throw that one out of the window at the moment. Because though there was a personal tragedy, um, Joe, Co Joe, Joe Cox's death and the effect that's going to have on her family, there is something deeper that was going on here. And that was the assault on democracy that happened on, happened on that day. And those of us who have confronted um, bigotry and, uh, 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 and um, injustice mustn't be afraid to continue to do that. I belong to a political party. I go out on the streets. I put my badge on, I make myself a target. I don't intend to stop doing that because somebody has gone out and killed somebody who was potentially a close friend of mine but never got the chance to be. We must be able, but must not be afraid to confront the evil, and it was evil, that was behind the killing of Joe Cox. I know, we, I, know I should not be speaking quite as controversially as I am, but I feel it needed to be said. Thank you. Thank you very much. I, I'm, my name is Richard Johnson. I'm um, a Labour City councillor, uh, like Jeremy, like Anne. 
uh, a Labour representative like Daniel. Um, we are all struggling to comprehend the events of last Thursday. Um, however, we are here today to prove that love can overcome hate. And in Joe's words, we are far more united and have far more in common than that which divides us. And to demonstrate and to commemorate the life of a committed and excellent parliamentarian <coughs> and a tireless and dedicated humanitarian and spokesman, boat spokesperson for the dispossessed and voiceless on what would have been her 42nd birthday. I didn't know Joe personally and sadly didn't know much to, didn't, was able to know her at all um, personally until, but, but reading the tributes paid to her and acknowledging the important and vital contributions to the, allevi to the alleviation of inequality and suffering around the world, here and here in the UK, before and after she became an MP, it is abundantly clear that Joe was a kind, generous, warm, funny, thoughtful, committed and compassionate person, beautiful inside and out. Joe's values were true Labour, an advocate for social justice, the abolition of poverty and want, solidarity with those less fortunate than ourselves, and the promotion of peace and prosperity for us all. My heart goes out to Joe's husband, two young children and wider family, for they have been robbed of a truly exceptional human being. Public life and the causes she believed in too have also lost a truly exceptional human being. So what fine tribute there is to Joe's tireless commitment to the values she believed in and redoubling our efforts to bring about a better, more just, more peaceful, more equal and more tolerant kind of world. That is what we must strive for. That is what we must work for. We owe it to Jo that her life was not in vain. Thank you very much. We will now hold about a minute silence to remember Jo, to remember what she stood for, and to re remember that we have much more in common and that we should not like Jo.